Sources in Sri Lanka have told Channel 4 News that the man at the centre of the Liam Fox row, Adam Werity, offered to help the country's government acquire arms supplies for internal security. The new claim, strongly rebutted by Dr Fox tonight, came as Mr Werity was questioned by Cabinet Office investigators over his relationship with the Defence Secretary and his 40 meetings with him over the 16 months since the general election. Mr Werity has not so far responded to any of the claims against him. Our political correspondent Michael Crick has this report. Hi, this is Adam Werity, so I'm not available to take your call. The focus today turned to Adam Werity, who's not been answering his email or his mobile phone. I'll leave a message. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. My message got no reply, though. A pity, as I wanted Mr Werity's reaction to what several well-placed sources in Sri Lanka have been telling Channel 4 News. They say they've heard that Werity, on his trips to the country, offered to help the Sri Lankan government both in securing arms supplies for internal security and also help them improve the regime's international reputation. Because of the difficult situation in Sri Lanka, we've had no way of verifying what our sources tell us, though in the past we found them reliable. Liam Fox's spokesman told us, Dr Fox's visits to Sri Lanka in opposition have been to promote post-conflict reconciliation and development. Any suggestion otherwise is without foundation and is insulting. You think Dr Fox can carry on? Can Dr Fox carry on? Dr Fox too was lying low today, not amongst those confidently marching up Downing Street for the weekly cabinet, though he did attend, presumably, through a back door. Afterwards, his colleagues didn't want to discuss it much. Do you think Liam Fox is going to survive? We've had, uh, we've had a really good cabinet meeting, Michael, and that's all I want to say. Did you discuss the Fox business? We had a really good cabinet meeting, Michael. Well, you can just say no that's, if you didn't. Uh, all I want to say, we had a really good meeting. Mr Carmichael, what do you make of this Liam Fox business? Uh, I think that's something I'd rather discuss with colleagues than with you, Michael. You discussed the Fox business this morning? Uh, no, we didn't, actually. No, we discussed, um, uh, well, as you know, cabinet discussions are confidential, but we discussed all the business of government. What do you make of it? It's all a bit strange, is it? Do you think Mr Fox, Dr Fox is going to survive now? Yes, I think Liam's doing a fantastic job as Defence Secretary. Your colleague Mr. Liam Fox is going to survive? Absolutely. Yesterday we learnt that Fox and Werity have crossed paths all over the world, amazingly often even for friends, since the government took office. Last year, the MOD says, they met in Singapore, Florida, Bahrain, and on three trips to Dubai, including one where the Defence Secretary was on a weekend break. This year, they've had holidays in Hong Kong and Switzerland and were joined by Mrs Fox on breaks to Abu Dhabi and Spain. Along with other official visits to Dubai, Israel, the US, Hong Kong, Singapore and Sri Lanka, the total is 18 foreign meetings in just 15 months. And now the Cabinet Secretary, Sir Gus O'Donnell, who incidentally announced today that he's retiring at Christmas, wants to get to the bottom of all those meetings. This afternoon, as part of his inquiry, Adam Werity was interviewed at a location away from Westminster. But in the House, Labour wanted to know why Sir Gus was carrying out the inquiry and not the PM's independent watchdog on ministerial standards, Sir Philip Moore. The Ministerial Code of Conduct says it is not the role of the Cabinet Secretary or other officials to enforce the Code. The Prime Minister has admitted the Defence Secretary has made serious mistakes and there is clearly a need for investigation, not least into whether Mr Werity profited by his association with the Secretary of State. Why are they blocking the proper investigation? This goes to the heart of trust in government. Yeah. I understand Sir Philip would have been available to conduct the inquiry if he'd been asked. Tonight, Liam Fox's future lies in the hands of Adam Werity, who, like all best men, has the power to wreck a good friend's reputation with just a few words. Michael Crick, our political editor Gary Gibbon, is in Westminster. Gary, this grilling by uh, officials from the Cabinet Office, what exactly has been going on? How does it all work? Well, I understand that it was uh, one senior official from the Cabinet Office, not Sir Gus O'Donnell himself. As Michael said in that piece, it was away from the Whitehall estate here, away from our uh, prying eyes. I understand it took about something in the order of a couple of hours, and one of the main focuses of the chat 
uh, because uh, Mr. Werity doesn't get summoned. He, he volunteers to come to this. It's not uh, uh, any sort of uh, legal uh, injunction that he's faced with. He comes along and one of the main questions that was put to him uh, was about his income. And uh, as I understand it, he talked for some time about where his income comes from, but didn't actually produce hard paper evidence yet, statements as it were from the bank, that shows exactly uh, where his income comes from. And I uh, strongly suspect that uh, he has now been asked to go away and if possible come back with hard paper evidence saying where his income comes from, because that is the number one question everybody wants the answer to. Uh, not least because uh, Harvey Bolter, uh, one of the uh, people, one of the businessmen who was in that room uh, with uh, Liam Fox and Mr. Werity in Dubai in, in June, has been saying that uh, Mr. Werity had a bit of an appetite for first class travel. Uh, someone's done a back of an envelope uh, calculation and worked out that it would be at least £100,000 to have been chasing Liam Fox uh, around the globe in the last uh, 16 months. A lot of money has been spent. Nobody's quite sure where it comes from, and Mr. Werity has to answer those questions. Well, and the other number one question, very briefly, is is, is Mr. Fox any safer tonight than he was last night? No. He hangs in about the same position. Uh, all those cabinet ministers that Michael was talking to as they were coming out of Downing Street were piled in either side of him in the Commons yesterday. A great whips operation put on with Number 10's authorization to give Liam Fox as much backing as possible. But there are quite a few Tory MPs going around today saying, hmm, I wonder if David Cameron put on that operation just so that it's a little bit easier, come the moment, come the piece of evidence to push Liam Fox out.